Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Notice when the breath comes in where you feel it in the body, where you feel it when it goes out. And are those feelings comfortable? If they're not, can you change the way you breathe so that they are? Try longer breathing or shorter, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. All kinds of ways you can adjust the breath to create a sense of well-being inside. This is important because this kind of well-being is something you want to appreciate. It doesn't harm anybody else, and it actually it's good for other people too. It's, you're not the only person who's benefiting from this. The more happiness you can find from simple things like breathing, then the less you need to take things outside to feed up your hunger for happiness. And the better mood you're in in the present moment, then the easier it is when you see someone who's suffering to feel compassion for them, or when you see someone else who's happy to feel empathetic joy for their happiness. Because when you're feeling in a bad mood, your, your compassion gets very narrow, your empathetic joy gets very narrow. Only the people you like you're going to feel compassion for. Only the people you like you're going to be happy for their happiness. Other people's happiness is some, almost like it's an offense or an affront. And the same with other people's suffering. If they're not people that you really like, then that, that's too bad. That's the attitude you have when the mind is really in bad shape. Your compassion and your empathetic joy just get narrower and narrower because you're not looking after yourself. When you're looking after yourself and there's a sense of well-being inside, you look at other people and you can empathize with them. You feel sympathy for those who are suffering. You feel happy for those who are happy. This makes it a lot easier for your compassion and your empathetic joy to become limitless. Because as the Buddha said, when you're looking at your actions, you want to make sure that you can sympathize with anybody who is suffering. You want to make sure that you can be happy with anybody who is happy. Otherwise, your actions get narrowed down. You help the people you like, and you, you're nasty to the people you don't like for one reason or another. And that way you shift from being a, practicing the Dharma. Your practice starts leaning off in strange directions. And all of a sudden it becomes victim of your likes and the things you like, you don't like, the things that you're deluded about, the things that you're afraid of. That's what comes when you don't have a sense of well-being inside. And this is why other people benefit from your doing the meditation. Because when you're coming from a sense of well-being, you realize, okay, your likes and dislikes are narrow and petty. You don't have to hold on to them all the time. You see other people that you don't like, but you can still feel sympathy for them. Or if they're happy, you can still feel happy for their happiness. Because after all, happiness and, and suffering, they do come from actions. And so maybe the person who did something that's suffering right now, they did something that was unskillful, but that doesn't mean that you can just leave them there. Because you've done unskillful things in the past, you're probably going to do unskillful things in the future. So you want to show some sympathy for the people who, like you, have been unskillful. And same for people who are happy. They must have done something in order to be happy. And so you're, you rejoice in the fact that they did something skillful. They may not be acting skillful now, but you're, you're happy for the happiness that they've been able to find. Because otherwise, your attitudes towards your own actions start getting skewed as well. You want to do unskillful things but get happy results. And it just doesn't work that way. So if you accept the principle of karma that unskillful actions lead to pain, skillful actions lead to happiness, then you want to be happy for the people who are happy. And you want to have sympathy for the people who've made mistakes. That's why when you're coming from a position of inner happiness like this, it's a lot easier to act toward other people in ways that are really kind, generous. It's good karma for yourself. Again, when you help others, you benefit. When you look after yourself, other people benefit. This is the kind of happiness that spreads around. It doesn't have clear lines demarcating, okay, this is mine and that's somebody else's. If you look for your happiness in terms of wealth or status or praise, again, this starts to setting up dividing lines. But if you look for happiness and kindness and generosity, empathy, compassion, again, then the lines begin to disappear. That what you do to look after yourself in a skillful way helps other people. When you look after other people and are kind to them and generous, it's good for your own mind. It's good for you. So this is why looking after your own breath and making sure that you're breathing comfortably is not just a little thing. It's a foundation for really wise compassion and pure action.